found that it doesn't work with later versions of Android. Uh, Minsung and his group have, have made a, 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 not really an extension of it, but have, have relooked at the system and said, how do we do this on these new versions of Android that are using this, this ART runtime? So uh, looking forward to this great talk, and I'll hand it off to, to Minsung. Thank you. Thank you for the in introduction. Uh, this is Ming Shen from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and uh, I will present my paper, uh, Tent Art uh, Multi Level Information Flow Checking System for Android Runtime. Uh, this work was done with uh, our collaborator from Baidu uh, Security Lab, Tao Wei, and uh, my supervisor, uh, John C.S. Louis. Okay, let's get started. Um, before we uh, go into detail, let's see some current status of the Android malware. Uh, as we all know, mobile devices become the biggest uh, target among all threats. And uh, here, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of sessions about the mobile security, Android security in CCS. And uh, here's a recent report from Kvasky uh, from 2004 and 2016. We detect nearly 200,000 samples of uh, malicious mobile codes, and uh, in 2014, uh, there's uh, one year about 300,000 new programs, uh, uh, new threats, and uh, for last year, it's about 800,000 uh, samples. And uh, there's an increasing number of mobile in the world, and uh, uh, when we look at the Android malware uh, sample specifically, there, it accounted for about 98% uh, of all mobile threats, same as uh, a PC, uh, same as uh, a malware in PC. Uh, there are children, uh, spyware, phishing uh, apps, ransomware, and rootkit, and so on and so forth. So. Um, uh, beside this, uh, we, al we, al uh, we also want to look at the uh, security and privacy for legit legitimate applications. If they steal your privacy or trans uh, transmit your sensitive data into the cloud and store it, we want to look at it. So the rest of the talk uh, will be uh, like this. Uh, first, I will introduce the co basic concept of dynamic tent analysis system. And uh, I will brief, uh, briefly introduce uh, Tent Art, our newly designed system. And uh, uh, before going into detail, we'll look at the background of uh, original Dalvik uh, app environment and the newly introduced uh, Art uh, app environment. And then we look at the, we will discuss uh, system design of Tent Art and the implementation. And uh, we will look at some case study for Tent Art. And at last, uh, we will see the evaluation results, both uh, by macro and macro benchmarks. All right, let's see the basic concept uh, for tent analysis. It's known as dynamic information flow analysis. So uh, uh, um, you can see from this figure, uh, imagine uh, there are three functions, A, B, C. Uh, it will generate sensitive data from this function and uh, put into a system, a black box, you don't know where the uh, data transmit from one variable to another. And uh, the function Z is uh, a function which can transmit the sensitive data to, to the network, to the cloud server. So uh, uh, what the dynamic analysis do is to uh, find, the, uh, find if the sensitive data leak the uh, black box um, to the cloud. So let's see the flow of dynamic tent analysis. Uh, first, uh, uh, the, uh, we, we want to label the sensitive data from certain functions. Uh, for this case, ABC will generate sensitive data, so we label it the ABC function, the data generated from ABC uh, functions. And uh, we call the label is tent tag, and uh, we call the function source uh, functions. And uh, we, we will, uh, for the dynamic uh, analysis system, we'll handle the uh, label transition inside the system uh, from one variable to another, from one procedure to another at runtime. And uh, also, we, uh, the 10 tag will propagate to the files. So we call the label transitions uh, as uh, 10 propagation. And then a uh, tent label, uh, the, the data which is uh, tended as sensitive data um, may transmit to the, um, to the network. 
Uh, so uh, we call the Z function, which can transmit the sensitivity data, sync function. And uh, by this means, we can see which data is leaked from the, um, from the black box. So we can understand the data leakage of a system. Okay, there's a lot of applications uh, for dynamic tender analysis system actually. So uh, this, is, this system can be used uh, to uh, detect the attack and uh, prevent the attack and uh, used for information policy enforcement and testing in software engineering and uh, data lifetime and scope analysis. And uh, actually in Android as introduced by William, there are currently already a tent analysis system for Android. And um, it is called Tendroid, it, which is a notable uh, uh, tent analysis system introduced in 2010. And uh, by, by William Inc., my session chair, and uh, there are a lot of, of systems are based on Tendroid actually. And, uh, Originally, Tendroid was designed for a VM virtual machine based system and implement on, uh, we call it Lexi Android system is for 2.1, 2.3, 4.1 and uh, 4.3 uh, for versions. Uh, and currently it, it is Android 6.0. Uh, so but from Android 5.0, Android adopted a head of time compilation strategy rather than traditional uh, Dalvik interpretation uh, strategy. And uh, we, uh, it is uh, short for AOT. And uh, the uh, total runtime will be replaced as Android runtime uh, ART. And uh, this Android runtime um, makes uh, portability uh, issues. We cannot easily port the original Tendroid to Android runtime. And uh, for some appli application using uh, latest uh, SDK, you cannot uh, actually um, did the, uh, do the tent analysis on the old version Android system, for example, uh, 4.3. And uh, also uh, for the uh, interpreter is uh, the performance issue is, is not a concern. So we did the uh, uh, analysis on the top uh, 500 application from Google Play. Uh, from uh, we uh, collected from uh, in 2000 uh, last year and this year, and we compared the minimum SDK and target SDK from last year and uh, this year. Um, actually, the uh, application is uh, tend to use the latest SDK and uh, they are moving to the latest version of uh, uh, Android. So um, some application may not be um, analyzed by Tendroid. So for our system called TentArt, uh, the main goal of TentArt is to design the um, dynamic tent analysis system for the newly designed art runtime and uh, target to the latest uh, Android system. And uh, TentArt uh, introduced uh, multi-level uh, tent labels to test the sen sensitive uh, uh, labels. And uh, we actually instrument the Android compiler and utilize the processor, uh, process registers to uh, store the tent tags. Make, uh, we can uh, by using the register, we can achieve faster tent storage. Rather than uh, uh, looking at the memory, we can just look at the register. Okay, so let's see some background of the uh, original uh, Dalvik app environment first. Uh, as we all know, Android application uh, are written in Java and uh, um, before published to the Google Play, you you have to compile it to Dalvik uh, Dex bytecode, Dalvik bytecode, and then package together to publish on the markets. And uh, when uh, installation originally for Dalvik application, uh, the application uh, will be optimized by a tool called DexOpt, and uh, then launch by a Dalvik virtual machine to interpret the Dalvik bytecode at runtime. So for the uh, art uh, 
happy environment, which use a head of time compilation strategy. Uh, it uh, um, basically uh, when you install the application, uh, at runtime replace the optimization uh, stage here to compilation stage. So uh, there's a tool which is compiler called DEX uh, to OAT to compile the DEX back best bad code to native uh, um, machine code. So uh, the format is .oat, which is similar uh, with uh, ELF format, and uh, launch at runtime. And there are other support from um, at runtime libraries. So that's the difference between original Dalvik at runtime and at runtime. Okay, for tent art system, we actually uh, uh, um, modified the system in two stages, in the installation stage and the runtime stage. For the installation stage, uh, there are three uh, components for art compiler, which, is, which are uh, builder, optimizer, and the code generator. Uh, we instrument the uh, original compiler and the main modification on the code generator after optimi optimizer. So we can uh, add a ten logic into the control flow graph and generate uh, uh, instrumented the native code. So at runtime, when we run the native, uh, the instrumented uh, native codes, uh, the uh, in the instrumented uh, nodes will help to. Uh, maintain the tend propagation from one variable to another. And uh, also for ten tag storage, we use uh, process register. Um, we will, I, I will show you later. Uh, for this one, uh, you can see from uh, left uh, and right, there are two lines, two flows. Uh, the right flow will leak the, uh, the data, and the, red, the blue flow will not leak any data. So the node four uh, is actually instrumented node and will help to um, uh, ma uh, maintain the tent propagation, tent clear, and uh, tent storage. So let's see, uh, let's see the tent storage first. So uh, we actually reserve a register uh, in the compiler to uh, store the tent and uh, uh, in this slides, I just gave one example uh, for 10 storage. We reserve R5 register uh, in 32 bit um, uh, uh, platform. And uh, uh, we, uh, we use the first 16 uh, bits uh, to represent the 10 status for normal regular register from R0 to R15. And we use high 16 bits to, for uh, floating point register. And um, uh, in the implementation, we actually use two bits. And uh, uh, this is just uh, for illustration. So in this case, uh, zero means this uh, data stored in R1, R0 zero, uh, is not sensitive. And the one means uh, the data stored in R1 is sensitive. OK. So uh, bes uh, besides 10 storage, and we, we also want to maintain the 10 propagation from one register to another register. So a uh, simple illustration is to copy the, uh, uh, the 10 status in one bits to another bits. So it's qu uh, quite simple, uh, se uh, several assembly code here. And to copy uh, the 10 tag for R1 to 10 tag for R0. So um, besi uh, besides the, co uh, the variable assignment, there are other 10 propagation logic, a lot of 10 propagation logic. And uh, uh, there's a classes of uh, instructions in the uh, compiler. And uh, we instrument each um, uh, class of instructions. Uh, for example, move, boolean not. Uh, for unary operations, boolean not, uh, uh, and negative not, and uh, uh, binary instructions like add, subs, uh, substitute, multiplication, uh, div divide, 
and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, we also main, uh, we also maintain the tenant propagation from uh, uh, for method call invocations. And uh, besides that, we also borrow the idea in ten joy to maintain the tenant propagation uh, uh, between uh, inter procedure calls and the native calls. Actually, uh, it's difficult to maintain the propagation uh, to the native calls. So we currently didn't handle the propagation to native calls. Okay, so uh, this is a tenant propagation logic. And uh, for implementation, we implement the system on Android 5.0. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, use two bits to represent the status of the 10 tags. So there are four levels for uh, one data um, sensitivities. For example, zero means no leakage, one, de uh, one means device identity, two, sensor data and the location data, three, uh, sens sensitive content. And uh, uh, to, um, to monitor the tent propagation from uh, this um, uh, sources, we actually instrument the, some classes and the services. Uh, telephony manager, sensor manager, lo uh, sen location manager, uh, content resolver, and so on and so forth. And uh, we also did a case study uh, for some applications. Um, uh, we check in the data flow of the, um, some uh, famous applications. We found that some, this is an example, Taobao, a uh, famous uh, shopping app in China leaks device and data, uh, sensor data and the location data uh, at the startup time of the application. So besides the uh, um, case study, we also did uh, extensive e evaluation. For the mac macro benchmark, uh, we evaluate the app uh, launch uh, time, uh, launch time, sorry. Uh, it's <laughs> It's about 6% uh, um, overhead. And uh, for the installation time, because we instrument the um, uh, compiler, so uh, the compiler need to do extra work to, inst uh, to add some um, 10 propagation logic to the control flow graph. So the installation time uh, overhead is about 12%. And uh, we also evaluate the contact rate and the write. For rate is about 12, uh, 20% and for write is 12%. And uh, uh, we also did a macro benchmark on the compilation time. Uh, um, we picked the eight, eight building apps in AOSP uh, project and uh, we, 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 compile, we installed the application uh, and uh, compile it and calculate the compilation time um, originally and using the tent art. And we found it introduced about uh, 12, 20% uh, overhead. So um, for, uh, we also did the evaluation on, on the instrument uh, instrumented uh, uh, compiler, and uh, we calculate the, we characterize the instructions as several categories, memory access, data processing instruction, multi, multiply instructions, benchmark, uh, branch, uh, we, uh, floating point instruction, and other uh, instructions. And uh, we look at the uh, overhead introduced uh, to the instructions uh, level, and uh, there's about 20% overhead in total. And uh, when we look at the um, overhead instruction, uh, there's only 0.8% zero, uh, 0 overhead uh, for the memory-related uh, instructions, which may introduce more uh, CPU cycles. Um, besides that, we also uh, we also did a Java macro benchmark. We we uh, uh, we used uh, Caffeine uh, Mark three. And normally, this uh, originally this uh, this benchmark tool is for um, PC uh, Java virtual machine benchmark, and uh, we run this on the Android uh, platform, and uh, it it will introduce. Uh, 14% uh, uh, overhead overall, but uh, when we compare uh, the scores 
uh, for tens art, uh, uh, tens art uh, application, uh, tens art system, and uh, the system which um, didn't use a uh, tens art system, but use a legacy Dalvik virtual machine. Uh, our tens art system can achieve a hundred percent or more scores compared to the legacy Dalvik uh, uh, environment. Know that this uh, benchmark uh, is stayed on uh, Nexus 5, so uh, uh, presumably uh, the uh, more score the, uh, is um, the more score, uh, the performance uh, again uh, basically from the uh, art runtime, which may compile the um, benchmark tools into native code. And uh, we also did the evaluation on the memory, uh, uh, the memory benchmark, IPC macro benchmark, and the compatibility evaluations. If you want to uh, know more about uh, about it, you can uh, refer to our paper and see the details. Okay. Uh, for summary, um, uh, our Tentat is an uh, uh, information tracking system for newly designed art runtime. And uh, it is a register-based, and uh, we, we instrument the uh, uh, not that art compiler, and uh, we evaluate the system in macro and macro benchmark. So uh, now that's all. I will take questions. Oh, one thing uh, for the open source, uh, I'm working hard on the on open source this project, and uh, you know it's a very big. Um, uh, modification on the operating system, so I'm I'm still testing some uh, clean up the uh, code. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, release the code soon. Thank you. If you have questions, you can come up and state your name as well. Hi, Yannick Fred Antonio, UC Santa Barbara. Thanks for your talk. I have a question. Uh, do you think is there is any way for an application to understand that it's being tracked? And if yes, can we do something about it? Mm. Uh, actually, I'm thinking about this uh, things. Um, or one um, possibility is that uh, the application can look at the compiled native code, so it's uh, it's larger than is than the normal size. It may be checked. Hi, Oliver Schranz from CISPA Saarland University. Um, thank you for an interesting talk. Um, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is, um, if I understood it correctly, then your tent logic is executed during the code generation of the compiler. Yes. So my question is, is your solution um, dependent on the hardware architecture? So, for example, is it only implemented for ARM or ARM64, or is it independent? Um, uh, when you look at the source code of the compiler part, uh, actually, um, the uh, code build the builder is uh, for the whole platform, for the all platform. But for the code generator, they are separate. But um, Actually, we implement on ARM32, um, but the, um, I guess, uh, code structure, the method are similar, so you can easily port to one platform to another. Okay, thank you. And the second question is, um, how exactly is your deployment strategy? Would you replace the on-device compiler with your custom one? Yes. Okay, thank you. I also have two questions. I want to ask a clarification question first. Mm -hmm. uh, your illustration showed that you are producing native code as output. So I'm assuming you can take the code as input and then compile the native code and instrument it. But you also said that if an app makes a call into, into native code, you can't necessarily track taint through that. Did you mean that there are some native code executables that you had not instrumented, and those are where you lose track? Oh, that's because uh, for native code, you compile the compile the code before installation, so we, uh, if we want to track the native code, we need to build on the emulator of the for Android. 
I see. So that, that would be code that had not been instrumented because you're not compiling. Uh, yeah, you're right. For the code that is instrumented, uh, how do you do with regard to buffers and offsets? So if I'm not necessarily saying R1 equals the contents of R2, that's an easy way to taint R1. If I say R1 equals whatever is eight bytes under R2, maybe the second element in an array or something.